Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, we're going to revisit the character statistics example one more time and look at ways that we can improve it based on our new knowledge of working with HTML elements and working with the prepend, replace, and append macros using selectors to work with individual elements within a passage rather than the passage itself as a whole. Before we get there, let's step back and look at how we improved the character statistics example previously, and then I'll discuss ways that we can organize it even better working with HTML elements. So to begin, let's go back to the past. So when we improved this example previously, we looked at working with the include macro, and this is an incredibly powerful tool as it comes to macros within Sugarcube. We can write content in one passage, include it in others. As we previously saw with this one, we are including the reset statistics at the very beginning, and that's this code right here. And then we saw show statistics, these lines right here, and then our kind of main central part of this interactive story within Sugarcube were these sections right here, working with the link macro, the if macro, and the set macro. And then we saw the include macro, that every time we ran this, it included show statistics, which would show us the current values right here from this passage. And in case we reset, it would reset from reset statistics. So let's go ahead and run this. And we see statistics is down here. And keep in mind this white space right here that we now know about. And we saw every time we click on this, the entire passage is refreshed. We'll notice just a little bit of blinking going on every time we do it. And we can add points up to a total of five. And once we've done that, we can potentially reset it. Now, as we think about this, based on our new knowledge of HTML elements, working with selectors and working with the prepend, replace, and append macros, we can improve just this design. Instead of refreshing the entire passage every time we do an interaction, we can only refresh parts of the passage instead. Now, I want to put this before I get into the rest of this video by saying both approaches are perfectly valid. We can potentially refresh the entire passage. That's a completely valid approach. Alternatively, and as I'll discuss in this video, we can take a second approach by working with HTML elements, selectors, and corresponding macros to only refresh, or that is, replace content in a particular element rather than the entire passage itself. Again, both approaches are perfectly valid, just up to the author about how they want to do each thing. I will also say that in the second approach I'm about to cover, it's more complicated and requires understanding multiple concepts simultaneously. So if you feel a little better using this particular approach, where you just refresh the entire passage, perfectly fine. If you want a slightly more technical but slightly more efficient approach, as I'm about to cover, it's also perfectly fine. We saw in this previous example, working with the include and set and if, and particularly link macro. Now I want to note something before I jump to the new version, which is this right here. Every time we were clicking on something, we were transitioning to corresponding passage, which was the exact same name. Now, in the new version, which I'm about to jump to, I didn't do that. In fact, I don't use this pattern at all. I, again, work with HTML elements to achieve a similar effect. So let's go ahead and jump to the new one. New one looks like this. Again, same four passages, same four names, slightly different design. Now, before I go too far, let's kind of talk about each of those three passages and then work our way backwards to the statistics passage. So right here at the beginning, I'm working with the backslash or line continuation in Sugarcube based on our new knowledge we gained between the previous version where we looked at this and now this current version. So now the statistics link will be at the very top instead of down the page a little bit or down the passage. Over here in reset statistics, I'm also now using the silently macro around these three usages of the set macro. Remember, we have three different approaches to working with white space in Sugarcube. We can use the silently macro that ignores all output. We can use a line continuation, which I just showed in the previous start passage, or we can use the no BR, no break rule macro to condense the break rules or break lines at the end of each line down to single spaces. In both cases now, I'm using two of these three different approaches. In the start passage, I'm using line continuation, so the include passage line and the link are on the same line, at least as far as Sugarcube is concerned. Here, I'm saying ignore all output. 
The set macro doesn't produce output, so this works perfectly fine. Now, the main emphasis of this will be in statistics, but let me show this one last passage. Again, show statistics is exactly the same as it was before. Statistics, though, this passage has gotten much more complicated. Notice there are additional lines of code. So this right here is pretty similar to what we just saw. It's working with the link macro, the if macro, and the set macro. The new addition, though, is this right here with the replace macro and then the include macro inside the replace macro. And notice that this is looking for some element with the ID of statistics. Again, we use the hash for ID, the period for class or classification, hash for ID for identification. So what is this looking for? Well, let's scroll all the way down to here. And we notice there is a div, a division element with the ID of statistics. And this is brains, brawl, and points, which is what shows statistics is. Well, now look at this interesting thing. Every time this link is clicked, it will replace whatever the current contents is with show statistics. Show statistics is over here and has variables in it. So it will replace, sugarcube that is, will replace the value of the variables when it understands the include macro working with the replace macro. Put another way, this is a interesting pattern we can engage with within Sugarcube to use the include within the replace to refresh the content of certain sections of a passage rather than the entire thing. Notice I'm also repeating this pattern again right here for the minus, so this is plus and this is minus, this is plus and this is minus, and notice all of them have a corresponding replace after the interaction. Now, this code does seem a little repetitive, but the other thing to think about is we only want to refresh if a reader interacts. If they don't interact, we don't refresh. But if they do, we need to correspondingly refresh whatever that information is. And so that's what this does. Now, we could get a little bit more efficient if we wanted to kind of isolate each in particular line and only refresh those lines rather than all three brains, brawl, and points. In this case, we'll just replace all three of them every time we do it. And I'm reusing right here the link in and include. So let's look at this in practice. This will look very, very similar, but slightly more efficient. So notice we fixed a corresponding white space issue, again, using our knowledge of line continuation, continuing the include with the link, fixes that. And then notice all of this is now lined up. So these three are lined up, but notice we're not going to see a blink. Notice instead of refreshing the entire passage using a passage transition as part of the link macro, we are instead now using the replace macro in connection with the include macro. Again, a much more advanced pattern and relies on multiple concepts that we've seen here. Not only HTML elements in their selectors, but also working with the include macro and understanding how passages connect to each other. But now in this revisited character statistics, we can also subtract. Notice we can't go beyond a certain point or add. But notice we're not seeing that blinking effect. But as I said earlier in the video, if we wanted to do that particular method, perfectly valid. This is a, just an alternative approach. It's slightly more efficient. Again, refreshing only sections of a passage or sections of a page instead of the entire passage each time. But notice we can add or subtract as long as our numbers all add up or correspondingly reset. But notice reset does the whole thing. Alternatively, I could have changed to reset to do the exact same thing, but I left it as is. So what have we looked at in this video? Well, in this video, we can start to see how we can combine interactivity, we can combine our knowledge of displaying, and we can combine our knowledge of HTML and working with corresponding selectors to make much more complicated projects. However, in each case, we need to understand how all of those concepts and their associated macros work together within Sugarcube. We could not have started here with our initial character statistics because of all the kind of complicated concepts we needed to understand to even get to this point. So in the example we started with at the beginning of this video, we were working with the include macro, which again is incredibly useful and we're still using it in a number of patterns. But now we're combining it with our knowledge of HTML elements and in this particular example, the replace macro to achieve a similar effect but slightly more efficiently. Again, instead of refreshing the entire passage or the entire page, we're only working with very tiny selections of it 
to update that content instead of the whole thing. And this is, again, slightly more efficient and a little easier on readers. Again, the other approach is perfectly valid. We could have used the link macro in a very similar pattern to what we saw here with plus or minus, whereas at the inside the link macro, we also did a passive transition back to statistics each time. That is a perfectly valid approach to this. Alternatively, again, slightly more efficient that we are working with individual elements using selectors, working with the replace macro in connection with the include macro. Again, lots of different concepts now working in concert with each other, building on our knowledge across the sections within this video series on Sugarcube. Starting with our knowledge of the set macro, the if macro, the link macro, thinking about interactivity, now adding in as part of the previous extended section on interactivity, and then displaying, working with the include macro, and now working with HTML and the replace macro in connection with all of those other macros. Lots of things going on, lots of concepts working in connection with each other as we build on our knowledge across Sugarcube 2.36 within Twine 2.6. Thanks for watching.